So I'm gonna show you lastly a Golgi tendon organ release on the suboccipital muscles. This one's a really tricky one to show because obviously the person's laying in supine and our fingers are tucked underneath a lot like um, in the same, almost the same position that you did in uh, myofascial release in Tech 2, the myofascial hub at the back of the occiput uh, and you held the head like this and waited for a release to happen and the head would sink. It's a similar technique or it has a similar position, but we're trying to do something different than the myofascial technique did. So we're trying to get at the groups of tiny suboccipital muscles and I showed you a better picture of the tendon um, in the lecture. Uh, but if you can see here at the uh, posterior occipital protuberance here, um, the bumpiest part of the back of your head, just below that, just inferior to that, is where um, these muscles attach. And right at the attachment, that's where the tendon is. It's considered a long tendon because actually they are fairly long. Um, they only attach in one spot and then the muscle protrudes down from there. So that's the definition of a longer tendon versus one like the infraspinatus or the glute max that has a really wide um, origin. So uh, these are really important muscles. As you know, they're holding the heaviness of your head on the skinniness of your neck and they get really tight and really sore. They can be the origin of a lot of tension headaches and migraine headaches for people. Um, so this Golgi tendon organ technique is really good if we can learn to finesse our palpation and just get into the tendon portion of these muscles. Um, then we can create a reflexive relaxation in those uh, in those muscles in 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes when people, sometimes people can't handle a lot of massage in this area. It can, it just kicks up too much stuff. Maybe they've been in a whiplash injury and they're holding a lot of tension there and you have to think of techniques that you can use in the sort of subacute phase of that um, until they're, uh, they can handle more pressure in the area. So this would be a really good technique for that. So I'm gonna kind of show you and talk you through the hand position here. So I'm going to curl my fingers up like this, just as if I was doing that myofascial technique, but I'm gonna start higher up on the head. So find that uh, occipital protuberance, so find the bump at the back of the head, and then your fingers curl in just inferior to that. We wanna be at the top of the occiput, um, before it gets into the dip at C1. So we want to be more on the occiput. And so we're tacking down onto that bone the way that we would with the scapula or the iliac crest, um, but we're tacking into, obviously, this time it's the occiput bone. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn Paige's head. To, I wouldn't normally do this. Usually what you would do is you would treat both sides at the same time, but for the hand position, I'm just going to show you where to go here. So there's her occipital protuberance and I've come down. I'm still on the occiput here and this is the top of the suboccipital muscles. This is where they start and this is where the tendon is. So when I do my technique, I'll do both hands together but I'm gonna create a C curve. So I could either curve it this way, so I'm moving my fingers medially towards midline, or you could do C curve laterally out to the outside. And um, so both hands will be moving at the same time, so you either move medially or laterally, and then you hold, and you create that C curve bowing technique that affects the Golgi tendon organs of these muscles. So I've found the right place. Is that okay, Paige? Is there any pain there? No pain. Good. And so I'd just instruct her to keep taking deep breaths here, especially if she had some discomfort. And then once I feel like I'm in the right place, then I'm moving both of my fingers medially. There's three different muscles that originate, um, the rectus capitis superior and rectus capitis inferior. The posterior, which one was that? The rectus capitis posterior minor is um, a really interesting muscle actually. I had the good fortune of being able to do a cadaver dissection where we, we dissected the cadavers and um, 
the rectus capitis posterior minor actually has a direct link to the dura of the cerebral of the um, CNS, the, the central nervous system. So when we're affecting these muscles uh, and their tension, we're actually creating um, a change in the in the dural tension as well, which can have a lot of effects on the entire spine. So it's kind of an interesting point. So again, I'm holding 30 to 60 seconds. And when I feel complete with that, I come out and come away. So no, no massage oil, make sure that you're tacking in and that you're creating that bow, that you're communicating with the client about their pain level and instructing them to breathe. And then you're feeling and waiting and, and waiting to feel a relaxation happen. So these are, this is where your palpation skills kick it up a notch. If you don't feel something immediately, don't panic, don't worry. Um, this takes a long time to feel. And so I'm going to suggest that for these massages and basically from here on out, when you're working with your partners, try to get them to, to try to cut out the, the personal talk. So the personal chatter, just get them to give you feedback about the techniques that you're performing and try to work in silence a lot of the time, because that's the only way that you can really tap into what you're feeling with your hands. Um, palpation comes over long periods of time and you'll continue to develop it throughout your career. So don't get frustrated. Um, I'm here if you have any questions and hopefully this makes sense to you.